All right, welcome to the session replay editor tutorial. Let's get right into this. You got your trick and you're ready to film it. The first thing you're gonna do is press select to be able to get into the replay editor or the share button, whatever they call it these days. Now that this is open, let's set a start and end point for our clip. So we're gonna use the left trigger to scroll all the way back. Now you're gonna hold right bumper and this is gonna bring up some new options. So to set the start of the clip, you're gonna click in the left stick. So we got a little orange bracket right there and that's gonna show you where the start of your clip is. If you want to adjust the starting point, keep holding the right bumper and then use the left stick to move it left or right. You can always adjust this later too. Now let's set our end point. So we're gonna scrub through right to where we want the clip to end. So maybe right about there. Hold the right bumper and then we're gonna click in the right stick this time and it's gonna bring up the bracket for the end. And just like the start point, if you want to adjust the end point, just use the right stick left or right. Now that we've marked our clip, hold right bumper and then click Y to zoom into it. Now the entire timeline is just this this one clip. Don't worry, it doesn't delete everything else you did. You can go back and uh, you can still see the full timeline. This just isolates your clip. Now let's set up the camera. So we're gonna go to free cam. For this clip, I wanna be up close to the skater. So we're gonna want a fisheye or a slight fisheye effect. So you can either go to options, camera, and then go all the way down to camera lenses and you can change it to either a fisheye, which is gonna look like this. So this is fisheye wide, or you can change it to regular fisheye, which is gonna be in 4.3. So it's gonna look like this. Another way to get this effect is if you change the field of view. So under keyframes, use the left or right on the D-pad and then you're gonna change to field of view. Make sure you're at the very start of your clip and then hold right bumper and then press down on the D-pad. Now we can set the field of view. So the lower the number, the more zoomed in it's gonna be. The higher the number is, the more zoomed out it's gonna be. And uh, if you just keep going, it gets a little bit ridiculous. So for a pretty decent fisheye effect, between 120 and 135 seems pretty good. I'm gonna set it to 130, so press A to confirm. And now it looks like I didn't do anything. It looks like everything just went back to the way it was. That's because we don't have montage view on, so press left bumper. And now we can see our keyframes. So in montage view, you're gonna be able to see any keyframe changes you made. And since you put the keyframe at the very beginning, this is gonna to apply to the entire clip. For this clip, I'm just gonna go with the fisheye filter. So now let's set our first camera keyframe. Make sure it says camera next to keyframe. I think the camera's in a pretty good position. We're gonna have the skater start off on the left side of the frame. Now hold right bumper and at the far side, you'll see camera roll. What this is gonna do is while you're holding right bumper and you press the triggers, you're gonna be able to rotate the camera, like roll it over. So this will allow you to give it like more of a handheld look, like more life. So for these keyframes, you wanna make sure that it says smooth keys at the bottom. That's gonna make sure all the keyframe transitions are very smooth. You can also have it to linear keys, which is gonna be like a hard cut, or constant keys, which is gonna keep it consistent. So we're gonna keep it at smooth keys, makes everything look nice. Once you get the camera angle, press down on the D-pad to set your keyframe. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my end keyframe now. So where do I want it to end? I think my end point is gonna be somewhere around here. So hold right bumper. Let's give it a little bit of a tilt again. Okay, now let's set the rest of the camera movement. So right in the middle, I want the skater to be in the middle of frame right there. Actually, slightly over, because I think I want the three flip in the middle of the frame. Now, if you decide that there's a keyframe that you don't like and you want to get rid of it, hold right bumper and then press left or right on the D-pad to jump over to that keyframe so we can jump to whatever keyframe. And to remove it, you press up on the D-pad. So to view everything you just did, make sure it says montage view on. If it's not, press LB and then press A to play everything back. And there we go. I think I'll make some adjustments right about here. I kind of want the camera to be a little bit more over. I'm gonna have it maybe roughly about there. So you can spend more time with this, getting your camera angles perfect, making sure everything looks great. But now that we're done with the camera keyframes, let's add some slow-mo. So press left or right on the D-pad to change the keyframes. So there's field of view, depth of field. We'll get into that later. Play rate is what's gonna make slow-mo happen. So for this clip, the first keyframe I'm gonna set is gonna be right before the pop. Hold right bumper and then press down on the D-pad. Pad. The numbers represent the speed percentage, so that is going to be 100%. Scrolling all the way to the left, you can get to 50%, 40%, 30%, all that. So those are going to slow it down, but if you go to the right, this is going to speed it up. So this is 120%, 130. So the first keyframe we're going to set is actually going to be a 1, 100%. Set it right here. Now we're going to go to where we want the slow mode to stop. So I think right in the crook, hold right bumper, push down, and then we're going to set this to 1. Now right in the middle is where we're going to have the slow mo. Hold right bumper, press down, and then go 
all the way down to whatever slow motion you want. For this example, we're gonna go all the way down to 20%. We want this three flip slow. All right, now let's watch it back. So it should start here, slow three flip, and then right into the crook. So it kind of ramps the slow-mo right here. Boom. If you want to get a hard cut to slow motion instead of like one of the ramped ones, so right at that landing, it did a hard cut to slow motion. What I did here was the last keyframe that I set to go back to regular speed. I set it as a constant keyframe so that it keeps this speed constantly until it gets to the next keyframe, which is gonna be my 0.5 one. So this keyframe right here, this one's at 0.5. And then you can set this keyframe to whatever you want to have it smooth or linear, constant, doesn't matter, as long as the one before it is a constant one. If you're wondering what the tag keyframe is, all it is is like you just tag your clips so you know where your clips are. So if I was like somewhere else in the main timeline and I wanted to like just tag it, you can tag it and then uh, be able to find it later. So holding RB and then pushing the D-pad left or right, you can jump over to wherever you tagged it. Now, if you messed up any of your keyframes or like did something you didn't want to do, like say if I just like, I don't know, set a bunch of random, random keyframes like here and, and here and, and all that stuff and I didn't mean to do it. Hold the right bumper and you can actually undo anything that you did. So press B to undo. Or if you decide you actually liked what you did, you can always redo it by pressing X. So just bring those back. Don't forget the day and night cycles either because if we want like a late clip and then you want a camera light on, turn the camera light on. We can get something that looks like this. Boom. The spot needs a little bit more lighting, but you can add your own lighting using the object dropper. Now, if you don't want to use this fisheye filter and you still kind of want like the fisheye effect, you can always change the field of view instead of having this on. So we're going to turn the camera lens filter back to default, go all the way back to the starting of the clip, set the keyframe for field of view, hold right bumper, press down on the D-pad, set a keyframe, and we're going to make it roughly about 1... 120. We'll, we'll make it 120 for this. As long as it's at the starting of your clip, the entire clip is going to be in this field of view. So let's see how this looks. There we go. I know a lot of you are probably wondering, where's that first person view that we saw in the trailer? That's not actually an option. You have to manually do this yourself with the camera, setting keyframes in the first person view. So I'm not very good at it. This was like my first attempt at it, but uh, so you can see I have a lot of keyframes to get this uh, to actually work. So yeah, right here, you can see the camera is in his face. So this is how you get the first person view. You got to angle the camera as if you were like actually looking through his eyes and then you just go and set a keyframe. So this is how you get that effect. You just put the camera in his face. It kind of looks like a raving rabbit. So yeah, this is how you have to do it until they actually add a feature like that in here. All right, now I'm going to go over long lens shots with field of view and depth of field. The first thing you want to do is set your field of view keyframe at the very beginning of your clip. So make sure keyframe says field of view. Hold right bumper and then press down on the D-pad. That brings up field of view. Now you're going to want to drop this number like all the way down to roughly like 10. You want this to be a low number to be able to get the depth of field. Make sure I have montage view on. And then there we go. Already without messing around with the depth of field, we have the background blurry and then some of the closer objects are in focus. And then the ones that are really close aren't in focus. So if I go close to the board, you can see it's in focus, but then the closer I go, the more out of focus it becomes. So now that we got the field of view set, let's mess around with some depth of field. Make sure the keyframe says DOF, set a keyframe. On this shot right here, the depth of field is set to 1000. So if we drop it all the way down to like 500 or something, eh, let's just stop at 541, why not? We're gonna set depth of field and then there's the difference. So that's how you achieve depth of field. You gotta set the field of view first, and then you can mess around with depth of field afterwards, if you want. If you have your field of view set all the way up, like back to normal, you're, you're gonna notice that there's no more blur. It doesn't have to be all the way down to 10, but you do need to have it zoomed in to be able to get that effect. Okay, I quickly just placed some keyframes and uh, let's just see how it turned out. Bam. So we got the skater a little bit blurry in the background and then the main obstacle is in focus. So as he comes into it, he's in focus, get the hard flip back 180 and then rides away as I go into the grass and the grass becomes out of focus. And then that's where you would transition to another, another clip. Now I didn't mess around with the field of view during this clip. Like at the start, I set it. So what I want to do is 
probably zoom in right about here. Like I want to have it like zoomed in on the hard flip 180. So I'm going to add this keyframe and we're going to bring it all the way down to five. I'm going to change the first one to a smooth keyframe. Now you can see it's blurry right now. So at this point, what I want to have happen is it be in focus. So I'm going to set a depth of field, add the keyframe for 1000, go back over to this point right here, set another keyframe to be a long journey, but I'm here almost. All right, now we can start seeing the board actually in focus. All right, I'll just set it to 2000. There we go, boards in focus. Okay, so what I did for this clip right now is it starts at 1000, gradually goes to this keyframe, which this keyframe is set to 1436.734. And then this one right here is set to 2000. I didn't adjust the cameras. And if I do that, then I'm gonna have to redo everything for depth of field and, and all that stuff. So if I move the camera from this point, like if I, if I back it up, I want it more zoomed out. I'm gonna have to change the depth of field for that to compensate for that. So make sure you have your camera angles first and then mess around with depth of field. So here's the clip in its entirety. So he's blurred out in focus and then blur it out again. If you're confused on which way to go to make your object in focus, depending on what it is. So for example, this board right here, the field of view is set to five. So we're, zo we're zoomed in. The way that I got this in focus, I set the depth of field to 2000 and that made the object that was closer in focus. So the higher the number, the more in focus everything is gonna be and the lower the number, the more blurry everything is gonna be. So if I lowered this depth of field all the way to 500, it's gonna make everything blurry. So yeah, have fun with depth of field and field of view, but just make sure that you have FOV set first before you mess around with depth of field. You wanna get your camera angles, perfect first before you start messing around with that because uh, changing these take a long time at the time of recording this. Okay, let's get into how to film a line. So one of the first things you want to do is kind of set the camera speed. So I'm going to set my first marker right here for the camera. And then I want to set my last marker. And at this point right here is where I want the camera to stop. So now we have the overall speed of the camera. So the camera is going to be where we want it by the end. And it's going to maintain the same speed. Now all we have to do is go back and aim the camera at the skater the entire time. I'll film this with the fisheye lens. No field of view. So we'll set my first frame right here. I want my second one here. I want the skater to be in the middle of the frame right about there. Okay, so we got the first clip like that. Now we don't want the camera guy to go in behind him yet. This point right here, we want the camera guy or girl, we don't know, to be on this side. So at this point right here, I actually want the camera guy to be on the back side because he's about to do a 180. I think we're going to go around that pole. Oh yeah, like that. And for the three flip, we want to be just behind him. So just go through it, set your camera movements, make sure your skater's in frame. And then for this one right here, we don't want it to like hard stop like this. We kind of want it to like gradual stop. So what I'm going to do to make it gradually stop, I'm going to move it up a little bit. Then I'm going to angle the camera, scroll forward a little bit all the way to about here. And then I kind of want it to like very slowly go in to this point. Maybe have it aim just a little bit more down and then tilt the camera the other way and set the marker. So now it shouldn't be such a hard stop. It's like a nice gradual stop. Not trying to be perfect, just trying to get the basic idea. So here's the full line in its entirety. So we got the backside flip nose grind and then a little ollie up, switch front side 180, three flip, bam, push, 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 and then inward heel. I mean, we can add some slow-mo to that quickly, right? Just, just a couple of keyframes. So just set one here, one here, and uh, one in there, set that to two and we're done. Now let's see what it looks like with slow-mo three flip. Yeah. And then we can slow-mo that if we want, but like you get the idea. You know how in some clips they'll have the line up until like this point and then it hard cuts to another camera? We could actually do that. So all we have to do for this is just get rid of the other keyframes. So the last keyframe for this line is going to be right here. And then I'm going to change this one to be constant key. What I want to do is I want to have a completely different camera. Just to keep things simple, I'm going to keep it fisheye. So I'm going to set a camera right here. I'm going to delete these keyframes to so get rid of that one and get rid of this one. So now the camera just hard cuts to another angle and then we just animate from there. Just make sure you have your keys set to smooth again. Okay, now let's see it with the cut at the end. I don't think I did it very well, but I just, you know, doing it quickly. We got the three flip in slow-mo. 
Bam. And then we have the camera cut right here. And then slow-mo there, why not? So yeah, if you want to do hard camera cuts, you can. Just to like a different, different angle. Now I actually don't want to have any of that, so uh, I'm gonna undo everything that I did. There's one little interesting feature that they have in here. So we can actually see the camera path display. So if we turn it onto full path and then turn montage view off, check this out. We can actually see the path of the camera, where the camera is, every place that you put a keyframe. So this is the path that the camera is gonna take. And as you go, you can actually see where the camera is in time. So that is a really cool feature. It's good to, uh, to be able to visualize it. I mean, I'm in the ground right now, but doesn't matter. I got the angle, that's what matters. So this is a very helpful view to get an idea of what you're doing. It's really cool that they actually used a VX1000 as the camera model. You can actually see how close the camera is at any given time. Like if you wanna get the angle and be like really close, you can actually see what the gap would be like in real life. So now we can watch this as if there's an actual cameraman following. Like we can actually see what the path is. And I think that's like kind of an entry to adding the actual film. I'm not sure when that's gonna be though, but I know that uh, their goal is to have an actual filmer filming you. That was showed off in the E3 trailer a long time ago. But yeah, having this right here is actually a really good start to that. Now to save your clips, press start, go to replay editor. You have the option to save replay or save montage. Now, if you save the replay, this is gonna be like the raw replay. No camera movements, no keyframes, nothing, just the raw clip. So if you wanna be able to save this and edit it later, save as replay. So line at Philly, confirm. So now my actual replay is saved. If you wanna save everything you just did, camera movement, keyframes, all that stuff, go to save montage. Line at Philly edited, there we go. Now to be able to watch them back, at the time of recording this, you can't go into the apartment to watch them back. You'll pause the game and then go load replay or load montage. However, since I'm not in Philly right now, I'm not gonna be able to load up the Philly one. So see, there's no montage here and there's no replay here. But if I filmed a trick here, so like here, here's a nose grind, random nose grind at towers. Now I can go to the replay editor, go to load replay, and there we go, random NG towers. So if we wanna be able to edit our Philly one, go back to Philly, go to replay editor, go to load, we'll load the montage. Actually, we'll load the, the replay. I have a test tray. Go to the replay editor. And there you go. Here's the entire raw clip. Now, if we go to load montage and then go to the line at Philly, now you'll see everything that you have edited. So you can go back and like tweak everything. So that's how you access your saved clips. And it all depends on like what map you have the saved clip in. Let's throw the VX1000 filter on there with actual 4.3 fisheye. Oh, there we go. All right, so that is how to use the new replay editor in session. Hopefully it helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way out and subscribe if you want to keep up with more session content. Until next time, this is Jail Nightmare and the clip ended before I could finish what I was saying. You'll see me in the next video. I am.